All right, welcome back to another Knox Hollow wand making video here on the Nemesis Gear YouTube channel. And uh, y'all just y'all really have been liking the spiral um, stuff that I've been doing, so I thought I'd torture myself here and do another do another uh, two part wand, uh, and this one is going to have a spiral on it. And I say I torture myself because I decided to do this out of whinge and leopard wood. And these are, they're really pretty woods, don't get me wrong. Um, but they're probably my least favorite woods to work with. And it's just because they're, they're terribly, they're hard, they're grainy, and they're super crumbly. And I'll show you here when we get to the handle, I even uh, show some of this. Now, this is the leopard wood. Um, the the winch is going to be the blade that I that I did here just a moment ago. And this leopard wood, it not only is it um, grainy, you can see how it just comes off in little splintery bits. The winch, winch does this too. The leopard wood's even worse because it's really got a lot of resin in it. And uh, that just builds up on the tool. It makes it sticky. It makes the rest sticky. Um, so when you're sliding that um, back and forth, uh, it, it, you know, it wants to stick and not, not slide smoothly. So, um, but it, it is a really pretty wood. Um, so what I've done, I, you know, I just put this in the round, um, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to glue this up with a chuck. Um, and then I, I drilled out a hole, um, in there. Uh, so I've got this in the chuck there and I got it drilled out and now I'm going to go ahead and shape the handle. Um, and then, uh, the handle on this, I've got to get this nice and, and even here because, just in case that hole is just a little off um, center, which you know it can be, even with that steady rest I'm using, um, it's really hard to get to get those perfect every time. So, um, and it always looks worse on uh, when it's spinning around like that than it actually is. Uh, it, it's off just f fractions of an inch. So uh, I've got my general length uh, marked out there, and I I know what. Um, size I'm going to go with or what general uh, shape I want to go with this. So I'm just kind of got the areas marked out about where I want to put uh, each section of the design. And this part I'm working on here is going to be where the um, blade of the wand um, glues into um, the handle. So I'm just going to um, kind of work on that design a little bit. <clears throat> sort of uh, a little bit of a tulip shape, I guess, is what I like to call this. And um, the handle is going to be kind of a, a, a similar shape. It's just going to be very elongated. And then we're going to do just a, instead of doing like a separate pommel, um, we're actually going to make the pommel part of the handle here. So it's just a nice, uh, even transition um, down to the base of the wand. Now I'm going to glue this up. So I don't want to, uh, I'm, I've got a tenon on there and, um, I'm kind of refining that shape, but I'm not going to completely cut this off the tenon yet because I want to leave that on <clears throat> so that I can use that to, um, when I put the glue on here, then, uh, I can use that to kind of press and leave it in, in the, the lathe here and uh, chuck it up that way. So now I've got my general shape in, I'm putting, I'm doing some wood burn, uh, wire burn, um, on this, it's just a friction burn. And then there's a whole bunch of sanding obviously that I've cut out. Um, and this does leopard wood has, is got a really pretty grain to it. Uh, even if it is a pain to work with, uh, it is really, really a <clears throat> pretty grain. And this wind is really dark. Um, but it, it's, it's too bad the grain's not as even, um, uh, otherwise it'd be close to an ebony, but it's a really kind of a dark brown. And the blade on this, I'm doing pretty similar to the other ones. Again, I just, I get the, the shaft generally worked down to the size that I want it, and then I feed it into the to the jaws here. Um, but this is where my tenon is gonna be, right here. And I've, I've measured it out to be just not almost as long. I don't want it to be completely the length of the hole. I want it to be just a fraction shorter than the hole that I've drilled. So, and I, I believe the hole I drilled is right about uh, three quarter of an inch. So, and this one I'm putting <clears throat> sort of a, you know, a little, a little bead um, right there where this is going to glue up. Um, I think that's going to be a nice uh, match to that. 
and then I've got to turn this tenon down to the right size and it's I'm making it just again just a little bit bigger than the hole because um, the um, parting tool that I'm using here to, to bring this down it, it, it can take it off really fast and it's a lot easier to get it really close and then bring it down with just like some 150 grit sandpaper which is kind of what I did there you can see I've got this where it's 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 really tight it just barely rotates in here and one of the things that I found when gluing these up like that, especially when you have a good tight fit like there, is you really kind of need to cut a little, a couple of grooves on the sides so that when you put the glue in here and you put this together, that it's sealing it up. And if you just clamp that up without putting a groove in there, it, it's got it, it basically air pressure uh doesn't have any the glue and the air that's trapped inside that hole doesn't have anywhere to go. So if you cut a little groove on the sides of your tenon, um, when you clamp that down, that uh, that gives that excess air and glue a little bit uh, of an escape path there. And then I just wipe off that extra glue um, with a damp cloth and then let it sit overnight to dry. And you can see there's there's just a, a fraction of a wobble. It's, you know, the farther out you go, the, the worse it looks. It's, it's not too bad. Um, and this is just the ebonizing solution. And you can see it does darken up the leopard wood a little bit. It's not quite as much as, it, you know, some of the other woods like walnut. Um, but it, it does, because of the grain of the leopard wood, there's parts of it it darkens more than others. And I think it kind of makes it pop. So now to do these spirals, I'm using... Um, my my and you, I did, I've done this by hand in the past, but I actually have this nice um, indexing wheel, and it's got little stops set up uh, at different intervals. And for this one, I've, I've I've got it divided up lengthwise by six, and then the rest, uh, the piece that is on the rest is another piece I designed and printed to fit on my rest, and those lines are a quarter inch apart. So both on the handle and the shaft, I'm I'm getting those. Uh, horizontal lines uh, there's six of them evenly spaced all the way around and on the handle there I, I made all of my cir uh, circles a quarter inch apart um, and then when I connected those with my diagonal lines it gives me an even spiral all the way up now on this this is going to be a graduated spiral so the spiral is tighter towards the bottom of the wand and as the closer you get to the tip the more that spiral opens out so the first four lines are a quarter inch apart the second four lines are half inch apart then three quarters of an inch apart and by the time you get to the end of the wand they're one inch apart so as i draw those diagonal lines connecting those intersections between the horizontal and the circumference lines um, those lines are going to get gradually um, longer lengthwise. So it's kind of like stretching the grid. So instead of having an even grid, um, it's, you know, the, the grid gets wider uh, as we go up to the top. And that's going to increase the, the angle of those lines um, in between each section. And I, I'm just freehanding the, the lines in. Um, you know, you can use the use like painter's tape or something if uh, if you like um, going across there. I just find I I I guess it's just easy for me to eye it up. Um, I've I've done it several times, and uh, so again, instead of doing the wood burning, uh, I thought, hey, let's torture myself even more and use the Dremel tool on this. And when you're cor carving organic shapes um, with the with the Dremel tool, it's a little bit easier because, you know, any little deviation, um, it, you, you can easily kind of cover that up. Um, and I find with these regular um, geometric shapes like spirals and, you know, perfect, you know, circles and stuff like that, if, if you're off, it really shows. So you have to be, you have to be spot on, you know, when you're doing this. And uh, all I've done is, uh, you know, again, I just kind of traced out those um, diagonal lines and got that spiral in. And then I used my little, um, I've got a file uh, that's a, you know, curved file and that kind of evens and smooths up those lines once they're once they're carved in there and then I use a drill bit uh, that's the same size as my groove um, with some fine sandpaper and I also you know sand out those grooves as well and as you can see here um, doing this graduated spiral um, with a Dremel tool is also a challenge 
So I'm just lightly touching it um, down, you know, going down the, the line as best I can. And then I'm, you know, gradually working that groove a little bit deeper because as the groove gets deeper, it gets wider. So you can, you, you know, if it's just a smidgen off to one side or the other, um, when you, as you get wider, you can, you know, adjust that to one side or the other um, as it gouges out more. So this was, you know, really it, another time consuming um, project to do, but uh, I really like the look of it. Um, and I, you know, even with the woods and stuff, um, they, they're, they're less fun to work with. Um, but, you know, gosh, sometimes, you know, you do this and, and you come out with uh, something that looks really nice and it's just totally worth it. So as you can see, as I got down here towards the point, um, those lines are just almost going lengthwise at this point and so I'm just finishing this up um kind of I had it chucked up in a you know a temporary holder there um just to kind of hold it and make it easier to work with but th that tip um you know I had to pull it out to do that by hand and then again you can see my curved file that I'm using that I'm coming back down um you know, those grooves and, and smoothing and cleaning those up. And then again, uh, I just grabbed a, a drill bit that's the same size as a groove um, with my sandpaper. And there's, a, there, again, there's an immense amount of sanding in here that I've completely edited out um, because it's kind of boring. Uh, so I'm just brushing that off. And once I got that kind of cleaned up, and this is the, the linseed oil. You can see there is a little bit of a color difference on the handle. Um, between the, the ebonized and the not ebonized pieces and that spe that spiral you can see it's a little bit tighter as it gets to the point and the farther towards the tip that it goes uh, it you know it gets it gets longer um, so it's a tighter spiral there um, close to the handle I mean and uh, yeah this is the final pictures of how it turned out you can see in the the grip um, that those kind of blackened areas how that ebonizing solution uh, turned parts of that grain almost black and then parts of the grain it left. And that's just something that's really just interesting about um, leopard wood is there are just there's different grains in there and the shape of them are really interesting. Um, but also how they handle the ebonizing solution, I think, is really interesting. So but uh, anyways, uh, spiral wand or spiral design for you since uh, everybody seems to be checking out the spiral videos. And this one was, uh, again, that graduated spiral. So something a little bit different that, that I haven't done a video on. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I do have this uh, going up in the Etsy shop um, tonight. I'm just finishing up the video editing on this. So if you want to check out the Etsy shop, uh, Nemesis Gear.etsy.com. Uh, I'll have this up in uh, the Necromancer wands, um, which are just uh, the two colored wands with the handle and the blade, uh, different colors. But anyways, uh, if you enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps out a lot. And make sure you subscribe for more. We'll get some more wand videos up for you soon. And as always, thanks for watching.